water continued to stand. There was debris everywhere. Big holes were in, in the walls. There were water lines where the storm surge had, had come in. This is the aftermath of a surge of 14 feet above the tide line. That's what happened at Fort Walton. And though the property damage was enormous, no one was killed. Hurricanes can't be stopped, but their movements can be predicted and people can be warned. Research is so advanced, in fact, that scientists can look right inside some hurricanes. With this computer simulation at Goddard Space Center in Maryland, it's possible to actually manipulate the hurricane's image. By moving the storm with an electronic glove and watching with 3D glasses, scientists can change wind speeds and ocean temperatures and learn what makes a hurricane grow or die. Then when a real hurricane comes along, simple observations can increase warning times. And that's all that can be done. Thunderstorms. Like it or not, every year in the US, lightning strikes 40 million times. They too have a season. Thunderstorms are most common in summer months because you've got that heat from the sun, that extra heat that you find in the summer months. And when you get the heat arriving at the ground, you find the air rising. And as air rises, it cools, it condenses, and it produces what we know as a cloud. Clouds are just great floating ponds or lakes of water vapor. But what turns a normal cloud into a thunderstorm cloud is another matter. To get a thunderstorm cloud, you've got to have that development of that cloud increasing all the time to make a bigger and bigger cloud. And thunderstorm clouds are the biggest clouds of all. They can extend up to 30,000, 40,000 feet into the atmosphere in some cases. As the cloud grows, drops of water and bits of ice knock and rub against each other, generating electricity on a massive scale. Just as in a battery, the electricity organizes itself into opposite poles. One end of the cloud is positive and the other negative. Once like this, the cloud battery discharges, sending out massive sparks. This is lightning. It's five times hotter than the sun. It makes the very air explode, which we hear as thunder. The air is full of electrically charged ions, and the lightning passes from one ion to another as if along a wire, giving each bolt a different shape. At first, the bolts may go from cloud to cloud, but as the electricity gets stronger, it must neutralize itself to the ground. It goes for the nearest object, which is usually the highest. It's wrong to say that it never strikes in the same place twice. Something tall can expect a lot of lightning. The Empire State Building gets hit, on average, 23 times a year. Its lightning conductors, though, take the electricity safely down the building to the ground. There are times in open country when people can be among the tallest objects around. And in the U.S. every year, Lightning strikes about a hundred of them. It doesn't have to be raining. If you are struck, the chances are that the lightning will leave you shocked and burned, but still alive. That's because the electricity usually just passes over your skin. If the strike is big, it does kill by getting into the body and stopping the heart. This is a bad idea. A quarter of all people killed by lightning were standing under a tree at the time. Trees are lightning magnets, and when one is struck, 
The electricity fizzes off it in all directions. The best place to head is perhaps not the first place you'd think of. It's the car with windows up. The body attracts lightning, yes, but metal also conducts lightning away from anything inside and into the ground. Houses, though, aren't so safe. Every year, dozens of people are struck while inside their homes. I heard this loud crash, bang, as if it were the sound of a 45 caliber gun. Simultaneously, I, heard, I saw the flash of a blue-white light come out of the corner of my eye. The lightning, relayed by a telephone pole and a fuse box, came in sideways, straight through the glass door. Houses, in fact, are festooned with lightning attractors. TV antennas, for instance. Power lines, phone lines, even plumbing can take the lightning to ground. In rare circumstances, lightning can fracture a gas pipe. It was a lightning-sparked gas explosion that set fire to an apartment house in Atlanta. The miracle was that everyone living there got out safely. Atlanta that day was hit by a blitzkrieg of lightning. Due to unusual weather conditions, thousands of bolts shot out of the sky and buildings burned all over the city. It was all part of the billions of dollars in damages inflicted by clouds that turned themselves into colossal batteries. But thunderstorms can be even more deadly. These piles of rubble were houses until they were hit by the fastest wind on Earth. Tornadoes are the spawn of thunderstorms. They spiral slowly across the landscape, packing wind speeds of up to 300 miles an hour. There are about a thousand tornadoes a year in the U.S., and on average, 80 people a year die in them. One of the most violent ever known hit Oklahoma City in 1999. In the suburb of Moore, the Carlin family was following the storm on television. It was getting even bigger and bigger, and I started noticing that uh, it was heading our way. The easiest thing to say is it's moving from Newcastle to Moore. Uh, you should have already taken your tornado precautions in the Moore area, you know, southwest Oklahoma City. I told my wife, it's time, we've got to go. The kids were really getting scared because they thought it was basically right there and we weren't going to make it to the shelter in time. The sky was turning black. The clouds weren't any clouds like I had seen before. And you could hear the tornado sirens going off and everything else. And all of a sudden you hear this, it's almost like a rolling thunder that just did not want to stop. The walls started vibrating really heavily. <laughs> We, um, I didn't expect that, and I'd never been in an earthquake or anything like that before, and you could, you could actually feel it coming. You could hear it breaking up everything and all the debris flying around, and so we kind of turned around the right corner of the shelter and all kind of just hugged.